Here's the integrated one um, lecture for your packet 11.1.1 .1 .1 through 11.1.3. .1 now I realize that there might be some of you who don't have a compass at home. Um, a compass, you can get a compass at the dollar store or you can get one at Walgreens or Walmart or um, if need be, if you just you don't have a way to get you can kind of watch and I'm going to probably work for you. Um, notice you still have your still have your can read and book, math notes boxes. Notice explanations which you can certain and even the answers exactly how to do it and the answers do my condition the same way as your answer key has. There's always more than one way to to do something, but um, I go ahead and and do them the way I would do them. I hope it doesn't confuse you if it's a little bit different than the way the book does it. Um, I think I'll do this one, the first one. So I'm I'm using side side side, and I think we remember side 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 means. Well, I need a, another triangle exactly like this one with the sides the exact length. So. Usually I want to, actually I'll do it on separate paper. What I usually do is I'll just um, pick a side. Maybe I'll pick, oh you can't see everything can you? Maybe I'll pick this longest side. And I'll just kind of estimate how much room I need. But really I'm not measuring. I'm not using any part of this. I shouldn't even use a ruler because um, I'm certainly, I'm just trying to use a straight edge. I'm not measuring. Okay. And I made it way longer than it needs to be. Kind of did that on purpose so that you'd understand that I did not measure this. Okay, the the measuring that happens happens with the radius of the compass because I think can't remember. I think we've used these compasses a little bit in class. Remember, compasses can make a circle, and however wide you open it, that's called the radius. So I'm going to set my radius for the length of line ZX or side ZX and then I'm going to go ahead and draw this arc here and so that pretty much guarantees that this side ZX is congruent with the side Z prime X prime okay so so far so good well then it turns out all I have to do is just measure the other two sides so this side is ZY and you're thinking, well, how are we going to find the angle? Well, I don't need the angle. I'm just going to make a, I'm going to make a kind of a large arc here, right? Anywhere along this arc that I just made is going to be the same distance. It's going to be the exact distance from Z to Y. Now I'm going to do it again over here. Now I got the distance on my compass I have the distance from X to Y. Okay, so I'm going to go over to X prime and wherever the arcs meet, well that's gonna actually be my Y prime. So try it on your own. Just watch me. Try it on your own. It's, I think it's kind of fun. And it'll make sense if it doesn't make sense right now while you're watching me do it, it will probably make sense once you do your own. Okay, so that's one way to do it. Okay, your book might have an idea of how to do it, but you can kind of see the triangles. I'm not a robot, so it might not be exactly perfect, but the triangles look to seem to be the same shape and size. Okay, so that's how you can construct a triangle congruent. Um, to this triangle that's shown. Uh, construct a rhombus. So there's several ways to construct a rhombus. One way is just if you know by definition that a rhombus, all, it has four sides and they're all equal length, you can kind of just do the same type of procedure that we just did. I'll make a line. I know, or I hope it's too long. Oh, I shouldn't have labeled it B. But Good to have an eraser. 
Okay, and then we're going